It's over, Joe. I've had it. I refuse to put up with it anymore. My lawyer would be contacting you. You don't even have. Hello. We're calling in your neighborhood to tell people that the Bible has solutions for the problems in the world today. You know, we have divorce, broken homes, and sorrow all around us. But God has promised us a wonderful new world in which we will all be happy. If you have a few moments, we'd like to step in and demonstrate our free home Bible study. <laughs> the Bible study is uh, free. There's no obligation. Yeah, all right. Come on in. Thank you. <clears throat> oh, would you like a beer? Uh, no, thank you. <laughs> Guess not. Well, let's uh, let's get acquainted. Uh, I'm Leo Stern, and this is uh, Ralph James. How do you do? And you're uh... Joe. Joe Simpson. Well, Joe, uh, do you have a Bible of your own? Uh, yeah, I think so. Well, yeah. the reason it's hard for many people to understand the Bible is because of the archaic English used. Uh, this modern version will make it much easier. What we'll do is to read a paragraph from this book and then answer the question at the bottom of the page and then look up the scripture cited in your new Bible. <clears throat> okay. see from scripture in heaven Jesus was Michael the archangel and then he became the man Jesus on earth he lived a perfect life redeemed us and after his resurrection by Jehovah God he again became Michael the archangel in heaven oh hi Stan this is Joe Simpson hi Joe glad to meet you I I've heard you're in need of a job yeah that's right all right, I can put you on with my carpet cleaning crew. Really? You bet. Oh, great. Okay, okay. I'll talk to you. Nice answer. talking to you. Thanks. Thanks. You? Well, I think you're right, Stan. I want to commend you on your good progress with our studies. However, knowing that the time is short before Armageddon, you need to grow stronger in Jehovah's organization. 
I want to enroll you in the Kingdom Ministry School and uh, train you for the door-to-door -door work so that you'll be sure to be found in Jehovah's favor at Armageddon. I just don't know if I can, Leo. Hmm? I, I know Jehovah requires this of me. I know I have to work out my salvation in his organization. So, I'll try. But Good. I'm very nervous about it. I'm going to be reading from the book of Philippians, chapter 2, verses 13 through 16. For God is the one that, for the sake of his good pleasure, is acting within you in order for you both to will and to act. Keep doing all things free from mum... Um. Hello. We're calling briefly in your neighborhood to share with you a couple of articles from our latest magazines, from The Awake and The Watchtower. This one has a very interesting article. It's called, What is the Purpose of Life? Isn't that what everyone wants to know? Soon I could do presentations at the ministry school without stuttering and felt I was getting good training for going out in the field service. Brother Leo was a great encouragement to me and everyone was very kind and helpful. Thank you. Would you like to make a contribution of 70 cents? Certainly. Soon the day came when Brother Leo took me out doing magazine work. Thank you. I was sure I wouldn't do well, but the very first morning, a nice lady took the magazines and Brother Leo showed me how to fill out the territory card. That's Very it. good. That's it. Okay. Shortly after, I attended a circuit assembly and was baptized in symbol of my dedication to Jehovah and his organization. Now I really was a recognized Jehovah's Witness with Jehovah God as my father and his visible organization as my mother. I really had a new family, just as Leo had promised. Well, I wrote to Brenda and I told her about my faith in Jehovah and the organization and Armageddon and everything, but she's not interested. She says she's moving away and taking Lisa so that I won't be able to influence her. Well, remember, Joe, we're your family now. Hmm. You know, many times Jehovah provides us a new wife and a new family in his organization. Just look at us, Joe. Both our former mates refused to become Jehovah's Witnesses when we did. Now, our marriages broke up over it, but it didn't take us long to find each other in Jehovah's organization. And now we have a strong witness family. Would you like to be my Uncle Joe? <laughs> Hello. We're calling briefly to offer you these two latest magazines. This one has an interesting article. Look, I don't need this. I'm saved, and I'm perfectly happy in my own religion. Most ministry calls were routine, but a few of them stand out in my memory. Excuse me, sir. We're calling briefly in your neighborhood to share with you our latest Awake magazine. Now, this one has a... Okay. It has a very interesting article. Thank you very much, sir. I was proud to be persecuted for righteousness' sake, and it just proved to me that we were really in the truth. Excuse me, sir. We're calling briefly. Would you mind if we just kind of left that there for you? We can come back another time. The true servant of Jehovah must be prepared to be fearless in service. Good day. We're calling briefly in your neighborhood with... State, state, boy. State, state. Oh. Oh. In times like this, we must remember that he who endures to the end is the one that will be saved. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, I want to pray for the Jehovah's Witnesses that are going door to door in my neighborhood. I pray, Lord, that I will be able to give a good witness to them. And Lord, I pray that they will really be able to see Jesus Christ in me and that I can show them your love.
Good morning. Uh, we're calling briefly on you and your neighbors to share with you God's promise of a righteous new earth. Well, I'm so glad you've come. My name's Beverly Williams, and your name is? Joe Simpson, and this is my friend George Littlewood. Hello. Uh, as I was saying, God has promised us a wonderful new earth. Uh, did you know that this promise was in the Bible? Oh, please go on. Uh, Psalms 37, 10, 11 reads this way. And just a little while longer, and the wicked one will be no more. And you will certainly give attention to his place, and he will not be. But the meek ones themselves will possess the earth, and they will indeed find their exquisite delight in the abundance of peace. So you can see, Mrs. Williams, that soon all the wicked will be gone, and only the meek will remain. Please go on. Um, Revelation chapter 21 promises new heavens and a new earth. And uh, look here at verse 4. And he will wipe out every tear from their eyes, and death will be no more. Neither will mourning, nor outcry, nor pain be any more. The former things have passed away. I'd like to offer you this book. You can live forever in paradise on earth, uh, along with a free home Bible study. I'd be happy to take your book in a moment, but I wondered if, first of all, I could ask both of you a question. You've come to my door because you really believe you're in the true faith. Is this right? Yes, we do believe we are in the only true faith because we are persecuted for our work of publishing the good news of the kingdom. Well, you know, you were so kind to share a couple of scriptures with me. I wonder if I might share one scripture with you. Did you know that the Bible has a test as to whether or not we're in the true faith? I have my Bible here, and maybe you'd like to turn with me to 2 Corinthians 13 and verse 5. Test yourselves to see if you are in the faith. Examine yourselves, or do you not recognize this about yourselves, that Jesus Christ is in you, unless indeed you fail the test. And I'm so happy to tell you both this morning that I passed this Bible test for a Christian because I have Jesus Christ in me. Once several years ago when I was at a very low point in my life, I fell on my knees and I asked Jesus Christ to come into my life and into my heart. And he now indwells me. So I'll be very happy to talk with you again. Maybe you'd like to come Wednesday afternoon at 4 o'clock? Yeah, just a minute here. Uh, my Bible doesn't say anything about Christ in you. It says Christ is in union with you. Do you have an interlinear New Testament, Joe? You know, one with the Greek words above and the literal English words underneath? Uh, no, I don't have one, but I think I can get one at the Kingdom Hall. Well, why don't you get one and bring it with you when you come on Wednesday afternoon? And I think when we look at the original words, we'll find out that we really can have Christ in us. Well, I, I bought an interlinear Bible at the Kingdom Hall, but was surprised to find that the New World Translation had added words not in the text. We were told our Bible was a very accurate word-for-word -word translation. I wonder if I might ask you a question. Well, of course, that's what we're here for, to answer your Bible questions. Do you believe Jesus Christ is Michael the Archangel? Yes, Jesus Christ is Michael the Archangel, and I can show you where the Bible teaches it. Well, just one scripture that actually calls Jesus Christ Michael the Archangel, it'd be just fine. Well, there isn't actually one scripture that calls Jesus Michael, but uh, we arrive at that truth by uh, a comparison of the scriptures. Well, you know, in Daniel 10.13 here, Joe, it refers to Michael as one of the chief princes. That means he is one of several others like him. I believe Jesus Christ is unique. I can see here, Michael is not unique. Uh, Leo, what do, you, uh, what do you make of that? Uh, give me a few minutes. While we're waiting, uh, Joe, let's just take a look here also at Jude 9. Uh, notice here, Michael the Archangel did not dare rebuke Satan. Tell me, Joe, did Jesus rebuke Satan? Well, of course he did on many occasions. Is it possible then that Michael is who the Bible says he is, an archangel and not Jesus Christ? Uh, come on, Joe, we're uh, leaving. We have another appointment. Oh, well, listen, I hope you'll come back next week at the same time. And Joe, you just remember, 
If you have the right Jesus Christ, you are right for all eternity. But if you have the wrong Jesus Christ, then you are wrong for all eternity. Hey, why did you lie to Mrs. Williams? We don't have another appointment. It's best to leave when someone is not open to Jehovah's truth. Then why didn't we stay and show her the truth? What about her questions? Why can't we show from the Bible that Jesus is Michael? I'm starting to wonder if he is. We will not be going back next week. She's one of those born-agains and probably has apostate literature against us. Come on, let's go. Hello, Ralph. It's Joe. Uh, look, I was wondering if you could come with me on a call uh, Wednesday afternoon. Uh, Leo doesn't want to call on this lady again, but I feel we should return one more time since we didn't tell her we wouldn't be back. Well, she has a lot of questions. All right, you'll come? Good. Uh, I'll see you then. Okay, bye-bye. So, Joe, have you done any more research on Jesus Christ? Look, Mrs. Williams, Joe knows very well who Jesus Christ is. He is the Son of God, he is inferior to the Father, and he is Michael in the heavens. You know, you Trinitarians, you make me sick with your freakish-looking three-headed God. The Trinity is a doctrine of Satan. Jesus Christ is not God. If I could prove to both of you, out of the Bible, that Jesus Christ is called Almighty God, would you believe it? You can't prove no such thing out of the Bible. Well, let's open our Bibles then to Revelation chapter 1 and verse 8. And let's read it together. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is, who was, and who is to come, the Almighty. Who is this? That's plain for anyone to see. That's Jehovah God. My Bible says Jehovah God. Joe, I see that you're using your interlinear Bible. Does it say Jehovah God in the original Greek? No, it says Lord God. You obviously believe this scripture refers to Jehovah God since your Bible has inserted that word there. Well, it, it must be Jehovah God since it is the Almighty speaking. Well, we're all agreed it's the Almighty speaking. So can we all agree that the Almighty calls himself the Alpha and Omega here? Well, yeah. Let's turn over to Revelation chapter 22 and see if we can get further identification on who the Alpha and Omega is. And we must always be sure to read scriptures in their context. So let's pick it up in verse 12. Behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me to render to every man according to what he has done. I am the Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter by the gates into the city. Outside are the dogs, the sorcerers, the immoral persons, the murderers, and the idolaters, and everyone who loves and practices lying. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to you these things for the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David, the bright and the morning star. So notice that the Alpha and Omega, the speaker, identifies himself as I, Jesus. No, the speaker changes. Verse 12 is Jesus, uh, verse 13 is Jehovah, and, and the other verses are, are Jesus again. Besides, according to my reasoning book here, the Alpha and the Omega is, is Jehovah God. Now, there was a time when we did teach it could be Jesus, but this, this is the newest light. Well, although your reasoning book may teach that Jesus is not the Alpha and Omega, Jesus himself says right here that he is the Alpha and Omega. However, could we all agree, based on verse 13, that the Alpha and Omega gives himself the title, the first and the last? Yes, verse 13 clearly has the Alpha and Omega calling himself the first and the last. Then let's turn back to Revelation chapter 1 and see if we can get further identification on the first and the last. Revelation 1, verses 13 to 18, contains the vision of the Son of Man. Who is this? 
That's Jesus, of course. Right. And if we read down through the vision to verses 17 and 18, we can clearly identify the first and the last. Look what the Apostle John says in verse 17. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as a dead man, and he laid his right hand upon me, saying, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last and the living one, and I was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. I have the keys of death and of Hades. Who is this? It's Jesus Christ. You are right. It is Jesus Christ. And by his own words, he is the Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, and Almighty God. And it is Jesus who is speaking in Revelation 1.8 that we began with. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, Jesus Christ, who is, who was, and who is to come, the Almighty. Who are you going to believe, Joel? Jesus Christ or the Watchtower Publications? We have to be going, Joel. We have another appointment. Uh, excuse me, uh, who is this appointment with? Where well, are you going? Uh, we just, we have another appointment. Now look, I'm sorry, but I don't believe you have another appointment. Do you think it's right to lie to get out of a Bible discussion? Why don't you stay a few more minutes and let's look at other scriptures calling Jesus God. I'm staying. Okay, then let's turn over to 1 Timothy chapter 1. And yet for this reason I found mercy, in order that in me as the foremost, Jesus Christ might demonstrate his perfect patience as an example for those who would believe in him for eternal life. Now to the king eternal, not created, Immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Who is this? Well, well, verse 16 is Jesus, and verse 17 is Jehovah. If this were so, this amen here would be one verse sooner. And in the early manuscripts, there were no verse divisions. This refers to Jesus Christ and calls him eternal, and the only God. Now let's continue on with some more. Joe, we've invited you to this meeting out of a concern for you. We've noticed a tendency on your part to be a bit rebellious to Jehovah's organization. You should not have invited Brother Ralph to go with you on another call to Mrs. Williams after I told you we would not be going back. Now, Brother Ralph confirms that everything she said to you was right out of Christendom. We want your word now that you will never go back to her house. And if you do, you will face disciplinary action by this committee and possible disfellowshipping. You would not want to spend the rest of the time remaining before Armageddon to be cut off from all of us with no one to speak to and facing Jehovah's destruction. I'm sorry, brothers. I she only spoke out of the Bible. I, I thought we could discuss the Bible with people. I won't go back to her house. Ah. Oh. Uh, while you're here, uh, could I ask your advice on another matter? I'd like you to listen to this letter from my wife. Dear Joe, since Lisa and I left you, I have done my best to start a new life for myself. However, I have never stopped loving you, although we could not seem to make a go of our marriage in the past. I was almost ready to return when you sent the news that you had become a Jehovah's Witness, and this is what you saw for your future. I know I could never be one, as I could not sing Raising Lisa with no Christmases, no birthday celebrations, and no family gatherings on holidays since Jehovah's Witnesses consider all these things wrong. I was so miserable that I even prayed to God for help. One Sunday I took Lisa and went to church. There the pastor gave us an invitation for all those who would like to receive Jesus Christ as their personal savior to come forward. With tears in my eyes, I asked God for forgiveness of my sins and asked Jesus to give me a new life. Joe, 
God has been faithful to come into my heart when I invited him in, and now dwells in me. Joe, I just know that with Christ in our hearts and in our home, we could be a happy family once more. Please write and tell me you still love me and want us all together again. I love you, Joe. Lisa sends her love. And most importantly, Jesus loves you too. We're anxiously waiting for your reply. Love, Brenda. Well, brothers, what should I do? You see, I want my family back very bad. Joe, if she wanted a reconciliation and was willing to serve Jehovah, of course, we would encourage you to have her back. Or, or Joe, if, if she was just a worldly person, uh, but willing to let you remain a Jehovah's Witness without interference, even then we would let you take her back. Joe, this will be hard for you. It would have been better if you had taken a sister to be your wife in the organization. Jehovah has provided you with plenty of single sisters to choose from, but you never did. Yes, I never did, because I love Brenda. And I always prayed we'd be together again as a family. I'm sorry, brothers. I need more time to think about this. Joe, Joe, you can't take her back, Joe. She, she's a born again like Mrs. Williams. So you must remain loyal to Jehovah's organization. She's of the devil, Joe! Lisa! Daddy, Daddy. Oh, Joe, I tried to wait for your letter, but I just felt the Lord was leading us to come. You did the right thing. Brenda, I'm so confused. I dedicated my life to Jehovah God. I've done all the things His organization expects of me. I've gone to five meetings a week. I met quotas out in field service. I always felt everything was perfectly right until just lately. Now I'm having my doubts. The elders won't be happy with me now that you're here. And then there are all those questions Mrs. Williams raised. Don't be upset with me. I sent off for some information from some people that used to be Jehovah's Witnesses. But they left when they found out the leaders of the Watchtower were false prophets. Did you know that for more than a hundred years they've been falsely prophesying the end of the world? All these references are from the Watchtower publications. Wouldn't you be willing to check this out in the Kingdom Hall Library? Maybe I should have done more investigation at the start. I wish we could just talk to Mrs. Williams. But I gave my word I wouldn't go back to her house. Why can't we invite her to our house? You never promised we couldn't do that. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, I ask you now to anoint me with your Holy Spirit for this encounter. I take my authority as a believer in Jesus Christ, and I bind that spirit of deception operating in Joe's life. I ask you, Lord, to convict him of the error of his ways, and welcome him into your kingdom, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. I can no longer deny Jesus is called God in the Bible because I did what you suggested. I, I got a concordance and I looked up every scripture. I also proved to myself that there is only one true God. I know Jesus cannot be a God or an extra God. But I still don't understand why Jesus said in John 14, 28 that the Father was greater than him. Doesn't that make Jesus inferior, as the Watchtower teaches? Well, remember, Joe, how we proved from the Bible that Jesus Christ is Almighty God and the only God? Yes, and I believe the Bible is true. Well, when dealing with the subject of Jesus Christ, we have to consider two aspects. One is the deity of Jesus Christ, that is, that he is truly God. The other aspect is that he is truly man, his humanity. Turn with me to Philippians chapter 2, and let's begin reading together in verse 5. 
Have this attitude in yourselves, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, although he existed in the form of God, did not regard equality with God a thing to be grasped. Now, Jehovah's Witnesses immediately ignore the first phrase, take the second one and say, you see, he, he didn't even want to be equal with God. He wanted to be inferior. But that's not what the scripture is saying. Instead of Jesus grasping after what he already had, he did something else instead. And picking it up in verse 7, if you follow along, he did this. But he emptied himself, taking the form of a bondservant and being made in the likeness of men. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. So Jesus, although he never ceased being in the form of God, at a certain point in time, and for a little while, he emptied himself, he humbled himself, he took the form of a man, and he functioned perfectly as a man to buy back what Adam had lost. You know, I think Colossians chapter 2 and verses 8 and 9 will clear up that wrong teaching from Jehovah's Witnesses that Jesus was only a man on earth. Would you like to read that, Joe? See to it that no one takes you captive through philosophy and empty deception, according to the tradition of men, according to the elementary principles of the world, rather than according to Christ. For in him all the fullness of deity dwells in bodily form. In him all the fullness of deity dwells in bodily form. All is all, full is full. Christ is truly deity, even in the flesh. It's no wonder that Acts 20.28 20, says that God purchased the church with his own blood. Jesus, I always believed that I couldn't pray to you, but now I am. And although I don't know all the answers, I trust in you. I'm asking you now to come into my life and into my heart and reveal yourself to me. If I have been in a false organization, please forgive me and show me the way to go to serve you. Thank you. Thank you for giving me back my wife and my daughter. Give me the strength to face the elders. And thank you for your free gift of salvation, which I gladly receive. You mind if we come in? No, not at all. We've missed you at the meetings the past two weeks, Joe, and we're concerned about you. And you haven't turned in your field service report this month. I've been preparing myself for a meeting with you. I've gotten back together with my wife, Brenda, and have been devoting every spare moment to Bible study and research into the organization. Where are the Society's publications, Joe? I've set them aside for the moment to study the Bible alone. You can't understand the Bible apart from the Society's publications? If you study the Bible alone, you could become an apostate, or worse, a born-again. I suspect he already is an apostate. Have you been reading apostate literature, Joe? I've examined photocopies of Watchtower publications, showing me that they have falsely prophesied in the name of Jehovah God many times. 
Now, perhaps you would like to check these out. Come on, Ralph, we're leaving. You'll be hearing from the committee on this, Joe. No, no, I don't think I will. Here is my official letter of disassociation from you, including the reasons why. Not the least of which is that you deliberately misrepresented the person of Jesus Christ to me. I've given my life to him, and I will no longer serve your false organization. Austin. Don't be late for your next appointment. Come, Sister Beagle. I'm so glad I caught you, Brother Stern. I have something serious to report. Oh, I'm sure you do, Sister Beagle. I saw Sister Smith at the shopping center. Joe Simpson was walking toward her and said hello. That apostate has no business trying to speak to us. Anyway... I saw Sister Smith actually nod her head at him. Oh. There was even a suspicion of a smile on her face. I insist you speak with her, Brother Stern. I only report this out of loyalty to Jehovah's organization. You always do, Sister Beagle. All right, I'll have a word with Sister Smith about how to treat this fellowship one. She's rather new, so she probably doesn't understand. She's to adore them totally. Come on, Martha, let's go home. Leo, I've got a letter from Marilyn that I want to show you. 
Martha, you know you're not to be in correspondence with our daughter. She's out of Jehovah's organization and is dead to us now. But, Leo, please. She's just writing to say that she and Tom are expecting a baby. Our grandchild, Leo. Martha, this is just a test of our loyalty to Jehovah and his organization. We have been strong so far. We can't get soft now. Don't you dare write back to her or contact her in any way, or you could be the next one the committee will have to deal with. You could be the next one to be disfellowshipped yourself. From now on, return her letters unread and unopened, and don't you dare write back. Beverly Williams and I'm calling in the neighborhood concerning the single mothers group home near here we're asking all those concerned with saving babies to help us out with expenses we want those young mothers and their babies to have a good future <laughs> oh it's you what are you doing here upsetting my wife haven't you caused us enough trouble hello mr. Stern I haven't seen you for some time since you missed our last appointment how are you I thought you might like to know that Joe Simpson and his family are doing very well. I know he misses you and would like to see you again. Seeing Joe is out of the question. He's out of Jehovah's organization, thanks to you. You tell him if he repents and comes back to the truth, then I'll see him. So then, Joe, Leo shut the door in my face. <laughs> I'm sorry for that man that he's so bitter, but... I can't forget the look on Mrs. Stern's face. That woman is in some kind of crisis. I have a very strong feeling that I should go back and see if I can help her out. I want to apologize for upsetting her. Well, Beverly, we have both been praying for some time for the Stearns. Perhaps this is the Lord's timing to deal with them. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we pray now for the Stearns that you anoint Bev to minister to them. We come against that spirit of watchtower deception in the name of the Lord, and we ask that you help them to come free in Jesus' name. Amen. I stopped by to apologize for upsetting you the other day. Was it something I said? You'd better come in and I'll explain. See, I received a letter from our daughter Marilyn explaining that she was expecting our first grandchild. Well, that should make you happy, not sad. You don't understand. You see, our daughter married out of our faith, and then she took a job forbidden by our organization. She was disfellowshipped. It broke Leo's heart and mine because now we can't have anything more to do with her. She's dead to us, but she still tries to make contact with us, and, and we can't speak to her. That's bad enough, but now this baby... When you came to my door and mentioned babies, it just set me off. So you can see it wasn't your fault. <sighs> Leo tells me that I have to stop all this grieving and get on with my life, but it's just so hard. I can't imagine my life without my daughter in it. <sighs> you don't know how hard it is. I can't even discuss how I feel with our lifelong friends, or they might turn me into the committee. If I continue to take my daughter's calls or, or, or read her letters... I could be disfellowshipped as well, and I could lose my eternal life in the new earth. Leo himself has threatened to turn me in if I don't return Marilyn's letters unread and unopened. I know I cannot completely understand the depth of your unhappiness, but I want to be your friend. Please feel free to contact me whenever you need to talk. Perhaps if you gave me your daughter's name and address, I could write to her and pass along the news to you. Here's my address and phone number. Thank you for your concern, but uh, I'm sure Jehovah will make me strong. And I have all the friends I need in the organization. Oh, hello, Beverly. I was out in the service in the neighborhood, but I was having trouble presenting these magazines on the happy family life. It just upset me when we're so unhappy. 
I hope you don't mind that I came to talk to you instead. You see, I can still count my time if you'll agree to have a Bible discussion with me. Of course, I'll be happy to discuss the Bible with you. Come on in, I'll make us some tea. Would it be all right if you showed me the scriptures your organization uses for disfellowshipping people? I don't really understand your disfellowshipping practices. Could this be our Bible study today? Well, we don't usually share those scriptures with the public, but I do have my Bible marked since we went through this so recently. First of all, in each of our congregations, we have a committee made up of three mature men who discipline the people. When a person sins and appears before the committee, they are corrected by the committee. You were given six months to give up smoking. You said you had, and yet you were caught smoking in your truck by an informant loyal to Jehovah's organization. You are therefore disfellowshipped, and from now on, no one will speak to you for months. If you don't attend all meetings and show your repentance and stop smoking, you will lose your eternal life at Armageddon. It sounds like this committee has a lot of power over your people. Yes. Depending on how serious the sin is, some are disciplined privately and must prove repentance to the committee. Some are put on probation for a period of time if they show good attitude. However, if a person chooses to disregard the instructions of the committee or they are rebellious to Jehovah's organization, they are expelled or disfellowshipped. My daughter Marilyn is an example of a rebellious one. She was told not to date anyone except Jehovah's Witnesses, although in her defense there are so few eligible men in our organization. The young man that she dated, Tom, he was a nice young man, honest, clean living, but he wouldn't become a Jehovah's Witness. No matter how nice her young man was, if he was not a Jehovah's Witness, he would be considered wrong for her? Yes. When Marilyn married Tom, she was put on probation. His parents put on a small wedding, but we couldn't go because they rented a church hall. Also, Tom serves in the military, which is forbidden by our organization. Our daughter lives on a military base, and she went to work on the base. At that point, she was disfellowshipped for her outright rebellion. Now she's dead to us. Well, this is all very interesting. But could you give me Bible reasons for this disfellowshipping practice? Where in the Bible do three men sit in judgment over the congregation? Well, there's no actual scripture about three men forming a committee that I know of, but, well, the Bible does speak of elders guiding the believers and disciplining them. Then I guess we'll have to examine those scriptures and see how the Bible elders acted and see if your committee acts the same way. I guess so, but first let me show you the scriptures we use for disowning disfellowshipped ones like Marilyn. Turn with me, if you will, to 1 Corinthians 5.11. I'm writing to you to quit mixing in company with anyone called a brother that is a fornicator or a greedy person or an idolater or a reviler or a drunkard or an extortioner. Now verse 13 plainly says, remove the wicked man from among yourselves. I'm sorry, Martha, but I don't see the connection to Marilyn's being disfellowshipped. 1 Corinthians chapter 5 deals with a specific problem. According to verse 1, a man was committing adultery with his father's wife. Mm -hmm. The congregation, according to verse 2, was tolerating this sin. Paul said to quit mixing in company with a believer that is a fornicator. Is Marilyn a fornicator? No, she wasn't found guilty of fornication or of sexual relations outside of marriage but of only marrying out of her faith and taking a job forbidden by our organization. I agree that marrying out of one's faith may not be a good idea, and I mean her job may not suit your organization, but where is this a disfellowshipping offense? I don't know, but I'll go home and do further research on that. Also, could you really consider Marilyn guilty of one of the other things mentioned here? Is she really covetous? An idolater, a reviler, a drunkard, or a swindler? No, of course not. She's a good person. Well, since this scripture doesn't apply to Marilyn, do you have another? Well, let's see. We also use 2 Thessalonians 3.14. Um, if anyone is not obedient to our word through this letter, keep this one marked. Stop associating with him that he might become ashamed. 
But Martha, this chapter is dealing with evil and perverse men, according to verse 2. Verse 6 here refers to men who lead an unruly life. Now, is Marilyn perverse and evil? Does she lead an unruly life? No, of course not. She's a good wife. Then why are you all treating her so badly? The very next verse, verse 15 here says, And yet do not regard him as an enemy, but admonish him as a brother. Marilyn is being treated as an enemy. And how can you admonish her as a sister when you're not allowed to speak to her? I, I don't know, Bev. All I know is that I can't speak to her on orders of the committee. Well, I'm sorry, Martha, but I just can't see from the Bible why Marilyn was disfellowshipped. Also, military people were Christians in Christ's day. What about Cornelius? He was a military man and greatly blessed of God. Um, I, listen, I have to go home now, Bev. Goodbye. Well, bye. <sighs> Look, Leo, we have been at this for hours. We've gone over all the scriptures that society uses for disfellowshipping. And you haven't convinced me at all that Marilyn should have been disfellowshipped, and you know it. I'm going to bed. We've noticed a tendency on your part to be a bit rebellious to Jehovah's organization. You should not have been invited, Brother Ralph, to go with you on another call to Mrs. Williams after I told you we would not be going back. Now, Brother Ralph confirms that everything she said to you was right out of Christendom. We want your word now that you will never go back to her house. And if you do, you will face disciplinary action by this committee and possible disfellowshipping. You would not want to spend the rest of the time remaining before Armageddon to be cut off from all of us with no one to speak to and facing Jehovah's destruction. You have brought reproach on Jehovah's organization. You have kept your pregnancy a secret now for three months from the committee. This shows no attitude of repentance on your part. The concerned sister turned you in. We have therefore disfellowshipped you. We uh, fully realize that you have no money and that your married boyfriend now wants nothing more to do with you. Please, please help me. I know where to turn to. <laughs> we suggest you go to the welfare office and have them look after you. If you accept your discipline, and show your repentance, then perhaps you can be reinstated sometime in the future, uh, depending on your conduct. You'd better hope that Armageddon doesn't come in the meantime. All right, let's review our plan one more time. We must act tonight since your baby will receive a court-ordered blood transfusion tomorrow and become a ward of the court. Now, are we prepared to obey Jehovah rather than the law? Yes. All right. Yes. A phone call will be made to the nurse in the nursery in exactly two minutes. She will leave the nursery unattended since she has to go to the station in order to receive the call. A faithful sister will keep her on the phone just as long as possible. Sister Beagle, you're to keep both nurses occupied at the station while brother and sister small go to the nursery, take the baby, and leave. You can count on me, Brother Stern. I'll keep them talking for plenty of time to save that poor baby from them. Loyalty to Jehovah's organization is the most important thing. I am prepared to go to jail if need be to stop that blood transfusion. Oh, never mind the dramatic, Sister Beagle. Just get on with the job. Brother and Sister Small, there'll be no time for hesitancy once you get inside the nursery. I'm going to get the van now. I'll meet you at the appointed spot with a motor running and the door open. May Jehovah help us all.
Hello, I've just arrived and I would like to see my sister immediately, please. May I ask They called me last night and told me she would probably have to have an emergency cesarean section, I believe it was. I'm just so worried. I wonder if I might go to her room right away. Could I do that, please? She was in a great deal of pain and I've driven all night long to get here through awful weather and dreadful traffic. Laura, can we help you? farm in the next jurisdiction. We've also got some other safe locations to take you to, just in case the need arises. Brother Stern! Brother Stern! Our baby! He's hardly breathing! He looks so sick! You've got to help us, Brother Stern! Get us to a hospital fast! We've come too far to go back. I'll take you to emergency in the next town. Oh, God! What have we done to our baby? Oh, hurry, Brother Stern! Hurry! Last night was probably the worst night I have ever spent in my life. I have been going over and over the disfellowshipping procedures and rules of the society, trying to line them up with scripture. Mm. And I admit that I'm ashamed for some of the other things I've done, too. I'm ashamed of myself, too, Leo, for the way I've treated the disfellowshipped ones. The small's baby nearly died last year. He still has medical problems because we took him out of the hospital. I've never questioned the society before, but now Marilyn is involved. I've tried to be strong to encourage you, Martha, but now I'm, I'm worried about Marilyn. Have we been treating her wrongly? Have we made a big mistake? Oh, Leo, it's so good to see you softening in your heart to her. This is probably a good time to confess that Beverly Williams has been writing to Marilyn and passing the news on to me. Now, Leo, I couldn't have taken it otherwise. Bev Williams has been a good friend to me, and she does know her Bible. That woman's done nothing but annoy me. First she took Joe Simpson away from me, and now you're involved with her. Did she really take Joe away from you, or just away from the organization? Didn't you cut yourself off from Joe? <laughs> he still misses you, according to Bev. <laughs> Leo, I, I want this matter settled one way or another. Either prove Bev Williams wrong from the Bible, or I will continue to be her friend. All right, you win. This time, tell her that we're coming over for a Bible discussion. But I get to pick the subject this time. I could never get the best of her on that discussion that Joe and I had with her about Jesus being the Archangel Michael. I could never prove that Jesus was Michael firmly from Scripture. But this time, we'll discuss our earthly hope. Uh, I'm on real good ground on that one. She won't be so sure she's going to heaven when I get through with her. I want to prove to you from Scripture, Mrs. Williams, that you should be trusting in an earthly hope, not a heavenly one. Now, actually, only a small number of chosen ones, anointed ones, go to heaven. And the rest of mankind can only hope to live on the earth. Now, the Bible limits the number of those who go to heaven to 144,000. The rest of the believers, the great crowd, remain on a cleansed earth. Turn with me to Revelation chapter 7, and I'll show you. Uh, just a moment. Before we begin reading this chapter of Revelation, could I have a decision from you both? 
Are we going to read this portion of scripture with the understanding that it is figurative? That is, it says one thing but actually has another meaning? Or are we going to believe it literally? That is, it means exactly what it says and nothing else. What? Well, I assume you're going to begin by reading verse 4, which says, And I heard the number of those who were sealed, 144,000 sealed from every tribe of the sons of Israel. So how about it, folks? Figurative or literal? Figurative. Literal. Uh, well, I, mean, I meant uh, literal. <laughs> I can see your problem, both of you. You see, your organization has taken this one simple sentence from the Bible and given the number 144,000 a literal interpretation. Well, it is literal. I mean, 144,000 means exactly what it says, 144,000. But then it has turned right around and given the phrase sealed from every tribe of the sons of Israel a figurative interpretation saying it's not really Israel but spiritual Israel or anointed Jehovah's Witnesses. It is figurative. Anointed Jehovah's Witnesses are the spiritual Israelites referred to here. No, Leo. That is not possible. Either we interpret this scripture figuratively in which case, a large number of persons symbolized by the figure 144,000 who are not actually physical Israelites but spiritual ones are sealed. Or, 144,000 actual Israelites by nationality are sealed. Now, which is it? Well, uh, I want a little more time to study this and uh, then I'll come back to you with the answer. Now let's get on to the subject of the great crowd that will stay on earth. Uh, now turn with me to verse 9. After these things I saw and look, a great crowd, which no man was able to number out of all nations and tribes and peoples and tongues standing before the throne and before the Lamb. Notice this great crowd comes out of all nations. This great crowd is the modern day Jehovah's Witnesses who will remain on the paradise earth. Well, that's an interesting interpretation, Leo. So you locate this great crowd on earth, do you? Yes, of course. Well, the scripture does give their location, doesn't it? It says they're before the throne and before the Lamb, right? Right. Well, if we just continue reading on in this same chapter, we find that this is a heavenly scene and not an earthly one at all. Notice in verse 11, the angels were standing around the throne and along with others fell on their faces before the throne. Before the throne can also mean the earth. The earth is Jehovah's footstool. That's an interesting point. Uh, however, if I understand your doctrine correctly, you place the 144,000 in heaven and the great crowd on earth, right? Right. Well, then let's look at the other scripture that mentions the 144,000. Revelation chapter 14 and verse 1 again mentions the 144,000. Verse 3 says they're singing a new song. Where is this song being sung? It says the 144,000 are before the throne. Leo, that's the same place as the great crowd. That's right, Martha. All scriptures referring to both the 144,000 and the great crowd place them in the same location before the throne. Well, I, I want to do some further research on this. The organization has all the answers. I know you believe that, Leo. But the Bible should be our final authority in all doctrinal matters. Even the organization has to line up with the Bible. You see, Leo and Martha, it isn't where you'll spend eternity that's so important, but it's who you'll spend eternity with. Turn with me to John chapter 14 and verse 3. Here Jesus promises his followers... And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Down in verse 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Now, frankly, it disturbs me 
to hear you and Martha refer to your organization as the truth, when it is Jesus Christ himself who is the truth. Leo, she's right. We do call our organization the truth more than we call Jesus the truth. You see, it is Jesus who has prepared a place for us. And wherever he is, we can be also. If he is in heaven, I'll be in heaven. If he is on the new earth, I'll be on the new earth. If he is in the air, then I'll meet him in the air. Jesus has gone to prepare a place for me. But you know, the place is not important. Being with Jesus is important. I want to thank you for taking the time this week to drop off your booklet explaining Jehovah's Witnesses' stand against taking blood transfusions. If I understand it correctly, Jehovah's Witnesses take all the scriptures referring to the eating of blood and regard the transfusing of blood the same. Is this right? Mm -hmm. That's right. We regard the transfusing of blood the same as eating of blood. Jehovah God forbids us to use blood or blood products in any way. We are to abstain from blood, as the Bible tells us. What is the penalty if a Jehovah's Witness should use blood in some way? It's a very serious offense. Use of blood results in one being cut off from Jehovah's organization. Not only is the user disfellowshipped, he loses his eternal life. I see your organization leans very heavily on Leviticus chapter 17 for its stand. Mm -hmm. Verse 14 seems to be a favorite, so let's read that together. For as for the life of all flesh, its blood is identified with its life. Therefore I said to the sons of Israel, you are not to eat the blood of any flesh, for the life of all flesh is its blood. Whoever eats it shall be cut off. Yes, Bev, that's just the point. You see, eating blood and transfusing blood are the same. And so if you eat blood, you are cut off. I mean, it says it right there in the Bible. But what does cut off mean? Well, it means loss of eternal life. Does it mean loss of eternal life, as your organization teaches, or something much less severe? Let's read on to verses 15 and 16. And when any person eats an animal which dies, or is torn by beasts, whether he is a native or an alien, he shall wash his clothes and bathe in water, and remain unclean until evening. Then he'll become clean. Are you telling me that the penalty for eating blood is just to bathe and wash your clothes? Offenders were only cut off until sundown? That's right, Martha. The law on eating blood applied only to the natural Israelites and those living with them. If a person ate blood, it invoked only the mildest penalty under the law. Nowhere in scripture can I find the harsh judgments handed out by your organization. I have to look into this matter further. I mean, I haven't spoken to a childhood friend for 10 years because she took a blood transfusion during an operation. I, I have believed all these years that she committed the most serious of sins against Jehovah. Well, actually, I have another reason for bringing this to your attention. I have another letter here from Marilyn in which she says there may be some blood incompatibilities with the new baby. <sighs> now, don't worry. No transfusions may be required, but I want you and Leo to be prepared just in case. Please take this letter now and also my notes in which I go through this booklet point by point and bring out other scriptures you might like to look at. Well, so Leo and I spent many hours going over the scriptures on blood with the society's literature and your notes. And we agreed that although Jehovah God does not like his people eating blood, neither did he punish them excessively for doing so, but he forgave them. I'm so pleased to hear you say that, Martha. Also, we agreed with you that the New Testament references on abstaining from blood had to do with murder or eating food strangled and offered to idols. We have just never read scriptures alone without the society's interpretations. Well, the Bible can be understood by itself, and I'm happy you and Leo are finding that out for yourselves. We're still worried sick over Marilyn and the expected baby, but at least now we no longer view the blood issue with the same severity. 
We hope that neither one of them will require a blood transfusion, but if they need it to save their lives, at least now we realize that God can forgive them. By the way, Leo and I still feel that Jehovah God must deal with his people through some organization, and although ours may be far from perfect, it's still better than anything else around. Leo wants some proof from you as to why you feel our organization cannot be used by God. Could you come over Wednesday evening and talk this over with us? I'm so pleased you invited me over. I'm loaded down with photocopies, which I plan to leave with you, so you can just examine them at your leisure. We don't need any apostate literature from you. Leo, all are photocopies of your society's own literature in which they have falsely prophesied the end of the world for over 100 years. The Watchtower Society claims in its literature that they are the prophet of God and even that all of their followers are prophets of God because they proclaim the same message. That's right, Leo. Remember in our Watchtower study, it said that we were prophets too because we proclaimed the message of the society. When you examine the society's record of prophecies, please keep in mind this scripture in Deuteronomy 18.22. When a prophet speaks in the name of the Lord, if the thing does not come about or come true, that is the thing which the Lord has not spoken. The prophet has spoken it presumptuously. You shall not be afraid of him. In fact, in the days of Israel, false prophets whose predictions did not come to pass were taken outside the city gates and rocked to sleep. These photocopies have just got to be phonies. Oh. I'm going to the Kingdom Hall Library and check these out. What, now? Yes, are you coming? Oh, yes. Uh... Bring a flashlight. I don't want anyone to catch us, so I'm not turning the lights on. Oh, Martha, Martha. Oh, Martha, oh, Martha. Oh, here's one I want to check. According to this hate literature, as late as 1929, the society was still saying Christ was present since 1874. This book, Prophecy, is copyrighted 1929. At least that's correct. We both know the correct date is 1914. The society couldn't be wrong about something as important as that. I mean, all our hopes for the new earth are based on 1914. The second presence of Christ began in 1914. Wait, here's the page, number... 65. Uh -huh. It says, the scriptural proof is that the second presence of the Lord Jesus Christ began in 1874 A.D. Huh? Oh, hey, look, here is the time is at hand. Leo, 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 here, here, Okay. You can see the society really did see that the Battle of Armageddon had already started and would end in 1915. Oh, I just can't believe that one, that the society would be that far out. <gasps> Page 101, Leo. The Battle of the Great Day of God Almighty, which will end in A.D. 1915, oh. with the complete overthrow of Earth's present rulership, is already commenced. Oh, I've seen enough, Martha. <sighs> These photocopies are real. I feel sick. Let's go home. Wait a minute. I hear something. Now, normally I'm not out this late, but loyalty to Jehovah's organization compelled me to pound on your door until you woke up to check this out. Quick, hide behind the door. Look, Sister Beagle, there's no sign of a break in, and who would want anything we've got in the basement of Kingdom Hall anyway? Father, how can you say such a thing? Jehovah's truths are right down here in this library. Our precious old books are unsafe. They wouldn't be here at all if you elders had sent them into headquarters as you were supposed to. At least Bethel headquarters wants to protect our books from, from thieves and fire. Why, they might be in real danger right now. If there were thieves here now, I'm sure your voice has scared them away. Besides, my nephew down at Bethel headquarters told me that they destroyed all the old books sent to them. I often wondered why. I think we know why. Now, will you let me get back to my bed if I show you that no one is here? Well, have we 
everything seems to be in order. I wonder what those lights were. Well, anyway, one cannot be too careful in protecting Jehovah's organization. Well, Sister Biggle. Jehovah's organization will be safe now until morning, thanks to you. and then Sister Beagle. How much can one man endure in one night? Leo, I have something else to confess to you. Several months ago, I received this in the mail. It's a letter saying that a Christian is praying for us and sent our names into this ministry. That should have gone to the committee. Leo, we were invited to check out several things about our religion. I knew you'd be furious, but I did read it. It said that our dating system was an error. Leo, I couldn't believe that Jerusalem didn't fall in, in 607 BCE as our society has always taught us. Of course Jerusalem fell in 607. What do you mean? Leo, I went to the library and I spent all day looking through encyclopedias and history books with the help of the librarian. Leo, not one historian, not one agreed with the date that the society said of 607. Leo, if 607 is wrong, then 1914 is wrong. And our hope of being the last generation is also wrong. Leo, we weren't supposed to discuss 1975, but we both know that the society set that date and it failed too. Martha, we've lived our whole lives for the Watchtower Society. We never intended to have children just to please the society. Having Marilyn was an accident. Thank God we have her. Many of the older ones don't have any family, and now it's too late. Leo, you're a natural leader. For years, I've watched you take menial jobs with low wages just so you could make time to serve Jehovah's organization. Yes. Now I have no pension plan or medical coverage just because I believed that Armageddon was going to be here any moment. And don't forget what little savings we had we gave to the society in 1975. Thank God we didn't remortgage our home as so many did. Martha, I can no longer believe that we are in God's organization. Whatever will we do? We ended the most horrible night of our lives agreeing that we have been serving a false organization. We have never been in such despair in our whole lives, and yet we still love God and want to serve Him. I'm so happy to hear you say that, Martha. You know, some people become disenchanted with the organization, and they turn completely away from God. Others drift in a no-man's land for many years, and they miss the greatest chance for happiness that they could have. <laughs> you mean there could be happiness in our lives after all these wasted years? Of course. There are even a couple of scriptures that describe you and Leo, I believe. Uh, look here in John chapter 5 and verses 39 and 40. You search the scriptures because you think that in them you have eternal life, and it is these that bear witness of me, and you are unwilling to come to me that you might have life. Martha, you and Leo have spent your whole life searching the scriptures, but missing a personal relationship with Christ. But Bev, in my Bible, in John 17, 3, it says, this means everlasting life. They're taking in knowledge of you, the only true God, and of the one whom you sent forth, Jesus Christ. I mean, that's why we spend so much time taking in knowledge. It means our eternal life. I'm sorry to tell you this, Martha, but 
That scripture has been altered by your translation committee. The words taking in knowledge do not even appear in the original Greek text. You can check this out in your Kingdom Interlinear translation. Oh, you can be sure I will. I've been checking out a lot of things these days. Here's what that scripture really says. Listen closely. And this is eternal life, that they may know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. Oh, that talks about knowing God, not taking in knowledge. You're right, Martha. You see, eternal life comes from knowing God, not taking in knowledge. You just can't work your way to God, not by meeting attendance, service, or study. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9, puts it this way. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not as a result of works, that no man should boast. I have been so busy all these years trying to do works and prove my faithfulness to Jehovah. Martha, you just don't need any more works. But you do need this free gift of God. You need to know God. Why don't you pray and ask God to come into your life right now to help you through this difficult time? You know, I do need this gift from God. Bev, will you take my hand while I pray? Of course I will. <sighs> Dear God, you know I love you. <laughs> and I have served you to the best of my understanding all my life. <laughs> and now my life is upside down. I have been in a false organization. And I ask you to forgive me. I want to know Jesus and I want eternal life. Oh, Jesus, please help me. Come into my life and be my Savior. And help me to sort out truth from error. I know now that I'm, I'm saved by grace and that alone. Thank you. Amen. Is it okay if I give my new sister in Christ a big welcome hug into the family of God? <laughs> oh, oh, I was up. Joe, oh, Leo. Well, uh, I'm, I'm happy to see you again. I've really missed you. Hey, uh, Joe, uh, I've got to talk to you, but uh, where we can't be seen. <clears throat> Can you drive outside town where we used to meet for coffee so we could talk uh, in private? Yeah, yeah, sure, Leo. Uh, Good. I'm on a break. Um, do you know I've even got a thermos of coffee in the car? Yeah. Uh, I'll leave right now? Good. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Hello there. Apostate. Oh! <laughs> uh... Sister Beagle, uh, how, 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 how long have you been here? I just got here. That apostate, Joe Simpson, tried to speak to me on the way into the store. Did he try to talk to you too, Brother Stern? No, I, uh, uh, I can't stop now. I, I, uh, I've got another appointment. But I, I, I... As you know, Leo, Nicodemus, like yourself, was a very devout religious man, a, a leader among his people. Yet notice in verse 3 that Jesus told him that unless he was born again... He wouldn't see the kingdom of God. Again in verse 5, Jesus told him that without this experience, he wouldn't enter into the kingdom of God. And verse 7 sums it all up by saying, Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. But Joe, I've been pinning all my hopes on the new earth. Leo, do you or do you not want to spend eternity in the kingdom of God, whether in heaven or on earth? Yes, I want to spend eternity in God's kingdom. Then Jesus said you must be born again. <laughs> Never mind the location, Leo. The location isn't important. Being born again, that's what's important. 
But isn't that an experience for the anointed ones, the 144,000? Nowhere in the Bible does it limit the number that can have this experience. Look here in John uh, 1, 12, 13. It says, but as many as received him. Notice, Leo. As many as received him, not just 144,000. To them he gave the right to become children of God, even to those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. Well, it does say, as many as received him. Leo, even in my worst time of confusion about Jesus, I remember how I, I cried out to him and I received him as my savior. And I well remember I didn't have all the answers, only questions. And yet I trusted in him, not some organization. I gotta get back to work now, but uh, I know you love Jesus and we wanna trust him also. Please keep in touch. I'll be praying for you and Martha. Thank you, Joe. Dear God, I don't know how to pray this kind of prayer. Jehovah, through Jesus, please help me. I have been like Nicodemus, harsh and righteous, and yet I feel empty. Dear Jesus, I want to know you like Joe does, like a friend. Please forgive me for all the years I've spent serving a false organization, believing I was serving you. I want to be born again and live in God's kingdom. I want to be with you, God, either in heaven or on earth, wherever. I receive you as my savior. Please come into my heart and my mind and help me to serve you from now on. Amen. Where have you been, Leo? Oh, around. Where are you out to? Where did you go? Oh, I went to Beth's place. I uh, ran into Joe. We had a little talk. Bev and I had a little talk, too. I asked Christ to be my savior today, Leo, and I feel so much better. I did the same thing, and I feel better, too. <laughs> okay. I think we've made some progress now on your disassociation letter. Are these the points you and Martha want to cover? Mm, yes, this is good. Number one, all the lies the society has told over the years to cover up their false prophecies and doctrinal changes. Number two... The unscriptural position they take over disfellowshipping and the unkindness they show their victims. I can testify to that one firsthand. Number three, their false interpretation of unrelated scriptures regarding blood transfusions, resulting in the loss of many lives. Number four, they're keeping their members from a personal relationship with Jesus Christ by inserting the organization as their mediator. You just can't serve Jesus and the organization. Yeah. You know, I'm also going to add a number five, Joe. Since I've had a chance to go over their instructions to elders assisting child custody cases, you know, it amounts to teaching witness children to lie under oath. I can't leave without exposing their tactics. Joe, how did Martha and I ever believe that this organization was of God? I can imagine how you feel, Leo. I gave a year or so to this society, and you and Martha gave most of your lives. The organization keeps you so busy, you don't have time to think for yourself. 
We've been on a treadmill of constant activity for years. I'm going to put a lot more effort into my disassociation letter, Joe. Oh, yours was good, but you didn't provide enough uh, photocopies. <laughs> Mine is going to be the thickest they have ever seen. <laughs> and then when it's through, Martha and I are going to go to Maryland's where we can be there just in time for the birth of our grandchild. I couldn't be happier for all of you. All this is an answer to my prayers. <laughs> I uh, hand delivered our letter of disassociation from the Watchtower Society yesterday. Oh, you did. And after that, Martha and I went out for a big celebration dinner. <laughs> yeah, we're so thankful we came out together and still have each other. And we know that the Lord will give us new friends to make up for the ones we know are going to forsake us. <laughs> yeah, by the way, I gave a copy of the letter to Sister Beagle. Oh. Oh, she likes to be the first one to spread the hot gossip. You know, we thank God for you, Bev and Joe, our first yeah. Christian friends. You've opened our eyes. Well, we're off on the first relaxing trip of our lives. Oh, yes. All our other vacations have been spent working at the Society's conventions. <laughs> and at the end of our trip, we're going to have a reunion with Marilyn and Tom. Uh, <laughs> We've never been so happy. Oh, I think all those years serving a false organization. I just thank God it's not too late to make amends, spend the rest of our lives serving the Lord. <laughs> Have a wonderful trip. Oh, good. Thank you. I'm happy for you. Have a great time. Thank you. Bunch of apostates. <laughs>